Welcome everyone. I think you're popping in. I can't see you, but I feel your creative energy. So this is exciting. You're trying something new today. We are doing creative mornings live streamed from Common Workspace. Something new. Let's give it up. Yeah. Yeah. Our team is here and we're so happy that you're logged on. We have a special guest. Um, Jessica Kaiser, before I introduce her, we're going to talk briefly about Creative Mornings. I can't see you, but I know many of you have probably been here in the past, but let's talk about um, our theme right now. So, oh, and by the way, are you worried about Josh? He's not here. No, he is here, but the theme is matriarchy. So I'm here. So I'm Julie Bonner, and this is Jessica Kaiser, and um, let's talk about the theme, matriarchy. Uh, this month, we shine a light on all of the leaders who are also women from across the vast spectrum of identities and experiences of womanhood. The decision makers, the life givers, the caregivers, the frontline workers, problem solvers, and world changers. The organizers and activists, artists and writers and innovators, teachers, scientists, medical professionals, politicians, business owners, the ones with megaphones and the ones working behind the scenes. Without you, where would, would our world be? So this theme um, right now, Creative Mornings Rotterdam shows this, uh, June's matriarchy theme. And Xavia Altena created the accompanying illustration. Thank you for that. It's uh, gorgeous. And we're going to get into thanking our, oh, that's me, by the way. You probably know. OK. And um, we're going to, oh, let's talk about Creative Mornings real quick. So. You're here, you're a creative. Creative Mornings is welcome to all creatives. There are actually over 200 chapters across the world. This is really exciting. And our Tucson chapter, we started about two years ago. So woohoo! And we can't wait to get back in person to see you. But for now, we're excited to be here in a uh, common workplace. Let's thank our sponsors. We couldn't do it without them. MailChimp and MailChimp, like Creative Mornings, MailChimp deeply values community. They have a special insider community for freelancers and agencies to help small businesses succeed, and it's called MailChimp & Co. It's designed to help you grow your business, expand your expertise, and get insider MailChimp perks. Oh, and it's free. We really recommend you take a look, and you can learn more at MailChimp. I'm sure the link is in the chat. And we also want to thank Skillshare. This month, the Creative Mornings Teams is checking out the Adobe Photoshop Essentials training course with Daniel Scott, Creating Your Own Dream Career with former Creative Morning speaker, Holly M. Coley Richardson. Links in the chat. And we wouldn't be here without Common Workspace. We're so excited to be here and seeing you. And they're offering a one day free trial for Creative Mornings attendees. Visit that link in the chat. This is a great place to come and work for the day or have an office. And if you haven't been here, you need to check it out. It is so cool. So thank you, Common Workspace. All right, now the part we're so excited about. I'm excited to introduce our guest and presenter today, Jessica Kaiser of J. Kaiser Workspaces. Thank you for being here. Thank you for having me. I'm going to quickly read a little bit about Jessica to kick things off. Jessica Kaiser is the CEO and design director of J. Kaiser Workspaces, an award-winning interior design and commercial furnishings firm headquartered right here in downtown Tucson. J. Kaiser has been designing and furnishing commercial environments across the U.S. and internationally for the last seven years and earned themselves a spot on the 2019 Inc. 5000 list as Tucson's fastest growing company. With a focus on new construction and re return to work strategies, J. Kaiser Workspaces offers turnkey solutions for all corporate, healthcare, education, public safety, and religious spaces. Jessica supports many local organizations. There's a whole list and you can check them out on, on our <laughs> website. So thanks for all that you do for the Tucson community. Um, so that's Jessica's bio. And we are actually, because we are so visual and you guys are so creative, we're actually going to kick things off showing a bit of Jessica's work to get started. So I'm going to hand this over. Yes, thank you, you drive, please. Very excited to share some of these projects with you all. 
So Julie asked me to speak a little bit about some of my favorite projects, and I pulled together three or four of them for you. Um, each one has, you know, a special place in both the development of, of our company and also like placement in our community. Um, I'm going to start with Hexagon. Hexagon um, occupies the City Park building in downtown Tucson. Um, this was a significant project for us in a lot of ways. Um, we had transitioned from our home at Connect Coworking to uh, being a tenant in Don Bourne's building at 20 East Congress, which you can see um, is that little gray building to the right of that big glass building. And so we developed this really great synergy with boring companies, um, and we were able to establish a really great uh, sort of synergy between, you know, we would have, uh, we'd be introduced to their clients that they were developing their projects on. If it was a good fit, we would move forward and help them furnish their spaces. And Hexagon ended up being one of those spaces. So um, Hexagon has now occupied all four of those top floors you see, and they've started to occupy the ground floor. Um, and we also decided to move our new showroom into this space. So we're very excited this fall to move into the southeast corner of this building that you see here. So we get to really treat this space as a full showroom. Um, we'll, we'll have 2,000 square feet on the bottom floor, but we really get to showcase this building as an example of our services and our products that we sell. So it was really significant. I wanted to show you a little bit about what we've been spending a lot of time on in this very new office environment. Um, this here is an example of a floor plan that would have been Hexagon's third floor two years ago. Mm -hmm. So you can see the priority was to fit quite a few people into the open offices. As many as you probably can Some get. of those desks are about four feet wide, you know, mm -hmm. so it was really about efficiency of space. Mm -hmm. uh, we did have some fun collaborative spaces and breakout areas, um, but really you can see the goal there was quantity. Yes. So fast forward to now. Different time. We went through an exercise of how do we... Uh, create a space where people can come back, have a uh, safe distance, and also not waste the product that we just put in this building in 2018. So this is a pretty unique configuration. Um, I started calling it serpentine, Yeah. right? Yeah. So we took some surfaces that were interestingly shaped. We've got 120 degree corners here, and I had to figure out how to minimize the new product and yet get um, you know people into this space with half the real estate to do it. Um, so that's how it ended up. I that's, think we're all real happy with it. The client that, loves it. That's really creative. Um, and things have changed a lot. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure that everyone listening to whether you're a designer or writer, it's always this problem solving. Yes. And even in layout, when you're in InDesign, mm -hmm. trying to yes. make a newsletter all mm -hmm. fit. Yes. Um, do you enjoy this part of yes. the job? I joke that I was always really good at Tetris. And so I love this. This is very natural for me. I love the layer of you start with the puzzle, you start with the programming of the needs, and then you add that creative layer with your finishes. So no, it was, it's a lot of fun for That's me. I enjoy cool. it quite a lot. Um, this is, I'll show you a few, few slides of Hexagon's interior. This yeah. was a great project because it was a collaboration between so many creatives. Mm. There were two architecture firms involved here. SBBL was on this and the late, great Steve Seacrest. Um, Steve, in fact, designed this lobby. We just furnished it around him and, and decorated around him, but uh, cool. really, really beautiful materials here. Um, these are those workstations you saw before yeah. we de-densified and expanded the space. Um, but we got to work with furniture with Hexagon. We got to supply their artwork. We did those vinyl graphics. Cool. You're seeing white noise here. You're seeing sound clouds. There was many, many layers. Oh, oh it's okay. So for mm -hmm. those that don't know, is the sound cloud, the, the, it's like sound buffering, those spheres yes. or circles? So the sound clouds are the round clouds. Uh, this helps with echo. Mm -hmm. There's been a big trend in the market to have a lot of polished concrete, glass, because we like this openness and this transparency, um, but then you have to deal with the echo and the sound. So um, um, the acoustic uh, clouds help with that. I like that. Sure. Yeah. These were those four foot wide workstations, which have been relocated now. We really put a lot of focus into the break areas as well. They have some really, really nice break areas that were designed for gathering mm -hmm. for weekly ice cream socials, Taco Tuesday, Happy those hour. kinds of things. Yep. Yep. So that was a lot of fun. Uh, we also had the opportunity to work with local artists on this project, nice. which was great. You don't yeah. always get an art budget in Tucson. 
So um, we worked with four different artists here. The piece cool. you're seeing on this concrete wall was made by Marvin Shaver. Okay. It's this really cool medium of uh, plaster and it kind of creates this, it looks like a topographical, like, like a map. You know, oh. it's it's very textural, um, and he works hexagons, logo into nice. it. Oh wait, do you have one of these so in your house? I do oh, have a piece by Marvin. Ah, uh, yes, I do. Very nice. Yes, I did commission a piece for myself. Yes. yes. Look at that view. Um, look at that view. Yep. This used to be the president's office. He's now been promoted on. Um, but one of the best office views in Tucson. I, I just think it's fantastic. My goal here was to actually keep the palette very neutral in the executive offices because I wanted the urban landscape to be the color yeah so you get a lot of blues through the windows in yeah. these executive offices nice. yeah very cool for sure another one of marvin's pieces yeah you can see the tractor and mining toys on the wall that was fun oh that's cool <laughs> yep that's awesome yeah so really hexagon has been a really great partner um which is why i chose to kind of office in the same building with them and um much like a lot of the projects that we work on, we're all about developing relationships with our clients, mm -hmm. um, which I think has sort of been one of my unique approaches. A lot of our, our competitors are such large firms. Yeah. They don't necessarily have the ability to develop those close, long-term mm -hmm. relationships. I mean, they all text me. They all have my number. They all, you know, we, we uh, socialize together. It's, it's an important part of yeah. business for me as a woman oh, yeah. is having these meaningful relationships with my clients. Yes. yes. Well, and also um, you brought up a good point or you're leading into yes. a lot of these are in Tucson. Are. Why does it make sense to focus yeah. on kind of the relationship, relationship side yeah. of yeah. things in yeah. Tucson. Yeah. I mean, so like I said, I've been in Tucson. I don't know if I remember said this on camera, but I've been yeah. in Tucson for 17 years and I started out in real estate. I worked retail. I've worked all kinds of different um, roles before I found my way into commercial furnishings. And it became very clear to me that Tucson has open arms and wants to embrace its entrepreneurs. Mm -hmm. And I was, I was so excited by that. I felt like this is actually very viable for us, just a, a startup to really get their arms around this city and really do well. Like the means are there. And partially that's because we are so relationship focused. Yes. And I thrive in that environment. I really value like following through. I do what I say I'm going to do. And Tucson is like, yes, yes, we will take you with us. And so this rise that we've seen over the last few years at Jay Kaiser is very much because of the startup community that Tucson has. Perfect. So this was a really interesting project for us. This is the Miranda Police Department. Um, so this was one of the more challenging and rewarding projects I've ever worked on. And it had very little to do with the furniture. Okay. It was really more about um, the collaborations that were in place here, which was good, but also very, very challenging. I had to collaborate with a competitor in order to do this project. At the time, we were not yet on the Arizona state contract, which we are now, which okay. allows us to sell to entities like police stations. Okay. Um, so we had to partner with a competitor and give up 50% of our profit. Oh. We worked with an architect that constantly questioned our ability to perform. Mm. Um, Challenging. Yes. yes. Yep. And there was also a professional project management group involved. So we were accountable to about four different entities. Wow. Right. Yeah. So it was, it was really, really interesting, but the project turned out beautiful. That's really, nice. really, really proud of it. Um, yet again, another blue palette, which we'll yeah. talk about a little bit, <laughs> a lot of blue and green. If you look at our portfolio, you see a lot of blue and green and people are like, oh, well you like blue and green. I was like, no, let's talk about that for a second. Yeah. Let's, let's talk about, let's talk about Cause we all care about color. Yeah. Here. Color We're trends, into, okay, color yes, trends yeah. are important. So many, many, many of my clients over the last seven years have come to me with brand standards yes. and consistently they have blue and green in them. Mm -hmm. Right. Yes. And so I'm really excited about the way that colors are trending now mm. you're starting to see some softer more serene palettes mm. in both logos and interiors and gaming trends and things you're going to see things like lavender coming we've got pantone's color of yes. the year this year the yellow, yellow and the gray and a gray yeah. yes yeah. which is our logo our brand nice yes oh yeah Done. so yeah so i'm grateful that we're finally moving away from the blue and green yeah speaking of jted and they're purple hey i love jted nice purple. Yes. That's cool. So J10 was an amazing project. I'm a huge fan 
of this school district, they are helping our young students find an alternative to like, let's say a bachelor's degree, right? Yeah. Um, and we are so short on, um, you know, certain trades. And JTED does a good job of getting these kids exposed to um, other options, right? Yes. Shout out to Cersen if he's on here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So this was a very cool architectural design done by WSM architects. So um, they created these classrooms that were not entirely square. They have like a 45 degree or maybe even oh, a little yeah. softer. Oh, sorry. A little softer than a 45 degree angle yeah. on the front of the classrooms. Yeah. And it created these niches. They could have these little breakout spaces in the halls so that the kids can kind of collaborate out there. Oh, yes. cool. yeah. So one of the challenges of this project is that it had to transition between both JTED students yeah. and TUSD students. Okay. Um, so it was actually shared space between the two school districts. Um, so the spaces had to be extremely um, mobile and be able to be used universally between the two districts, mm. um, which is a keying issue, which is a security issue, which is all kinds of things. So right. it was interesting, but I think um, executed very, very well. JTED has been very happy. And I noticed too, isn't that a trend? I know even in our office, yeah. like movable, uh, I think we even have it for a conference room, these movable kind yes. of desks that you can yep. like. Flexibility has really, really become more of a priority, especially now that we all just went through this experience of, the workplace changing completely. Mm. And so people are getting this awareness of like, oh my gosh, what do I do with these built in place desks yeah. that yeah. no longer serve my needs? Right. So yeah. flexibility has continued to yeah. move its way up the priority. I'm change. like picturing the old school, like mahogany, like yes, member office. Yes. yes. And yes. like, that's not, no. that's so not the feature. Anymore. Power modularity, hugely yeah. important. There's oh. a product we sell called a power fence. And so it's just a short little bar of power that can split up kind of yeah. Lego style yeah. and be moved around wherever you need it. Oh, that's so, cool. Yeah. So yeah. it's becoming more and more relevant for sure. Um, so many fun spaces at JTED. This um, is one of their science labs. They have maker space rooms. They have robotics rooms. They wow. have culinary spaces. So it was Where just, is this located? So this is at the Bridges. Oh, yes. Okay. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And it's one of potentially five buildings that they are going to develop on that property wow. in partnership with foreign companies. This is exciting. Yes, it's very exciting. It's a great program for our students. Mm. And I like lastly, this. I like this. Oh, is this? Is this, this? Is, yes. 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 Special place in my heart. This is my new showroom that is currently under construction in the City Park building. It's very, very exciting. This is a big step for us. Yeah. Yeah, it yeah. is for a couple of reasons. Tell me why. Well, we started out at a co-working space which is by the way, so nostalgic to be here at Common. It, yes. These desks, I remember these desks from Connect. Yes. And these chairs, I helped out Common with these chairs. It's, it's just wonderful. I love this space. It turned out great. Yes. But anyways, we started out at a co-working space, which I believe was pivotal in our success, mm -hmm. but we outgrew it. Yep. In two years, we outgrew it, I think is the intention with co-working spaces. And then we moved into Don Bourne space, which was so much fun to furnish because it was, again, a collaborative space. So we actually shared space with Born. We shared things with Smart Things. Um, this is my first own completely independent yes. lock the front door space. Yes. So I get to have complete autonomy. I get to design this space exactly the way that I want it. And it's very, very exciting. That's really um, exciting. Yes, it is. And it's a very dramatic space. This ground floor, some of you may have heard, was originally designed to be a food court concept. Okay. So the ceilings are 16 feet high. Wow. There's glass garage roll-up doors on both the east and west ends of this building. And you might have said it, but so basically earlier when she showed the hexagon yeah. building, we're, that's the building we're talking about. So yes. the one that you talked about yes. is really tall. Yes. This is the ground floor of that. Yes, exactly. And there really is no office product that exists in Tucson like this space that we're building out right now. It's wow. going to be very dynamic. And I think it's important for a lot of reasons. We're repositioning our brand to some degree now that we've hit this seven year mark yeah. as the premier solution. You know, when you're new in your business, yes. you have to prove yourself. Yes. And we just spent the last seven years, I think, pretty effectively proving ourselves. And so now we've been able to tell this story that we are your partner. We are your long term solution. We are the boutique level of service. Right. Yeah. We still provide excellent value. Yeah. We'll usually win on price too, but yeah. we are a partner in this transition for you. And this space really speaks to that because it's very dynamic and very powerful. And then one thing you, while you have these up before we turn off, you know, the slides, um, these 
represent you though you're a female business owner and you're doing things a little bit differently can you talk about kind of the colors and materials that we see right here on the screen right now yeah so a lot of the spaces that we work on a lot of our clients um are men we yeah. do a lot of very corporate, very male energy spaces. And so it was really important to me to elevate the female energy in this corporate space and to give sort of a conduit to women to feel powerful. And this space, I think, is really going to do that. Yes. Yeah. We're using a, a color that you're going to probably see as the color of the year in 2023. It's called Digital Lavender. Digital lavender. It is. Oh, that's a cool. Yes. Name. Yeah. Um, and lavenders and purples are used a lot in the healthcare industry um, because they're thought to promote healing and serenity. Mm -hmm. And I want that in my space. I think it's part of the conversation now as we transition from our this this weird trauma we all went through where we've been working at home, which has been better for some than others, into the workspace. Our expectations have totally changed. Yeah. Our expectations of our employers, of our of our work environment has changed. Yeah. And so this lavender color was sort of a foundation for me, to be honest. Um, you're gonna see a lot of light oaks in our space, mm. a lot of organic materials, uh, polished concrete, lots of glass. Yes. So it's a combination of this what would be considered traditionally a feminine palette mm -hmm. with this very powerful dynamic of these extremely high elevated ceilings of these bold pops of mm -hmm. like a uh, texture. Yeah. Um, and really, really excited as well to be able to showcase a mural from Marcy Ellis. In this. Nice. Yes. In this. Our, in our break room is really what it is, but it's visible from Congress. Oh, that's going to be so yes, cool. Yes, you look be in, amazing. you can see her work. Yeah. Marcy's so awesome. the lighting, I've actually designed the lighting so that as you're in at standing yeah. in Congress yeah. looking in, you can see all the way back to the mural cool. without obstructions. That's I know cool. it's going to be very exciting. That's awesome. Yeah. I love how you're incorporating art and also like you said, you, this is a mix of like urban, like yes. that building is very urban yes. and this, but then this more feminine mm -hmm. kind of calming mm -hmm. palette. And yes. I think that's going to be exciting. That's going to, that's going to stand yes. out yes. in something yes. different. Yes. And there's, there's a type of woman, you know, we are in hiring mode right now. We're hiring for designers. I'd love to get two new designers on the team yesterday. Um, and I want them to feel empowered when they walk into this space and have that be part of the draw of yeah. wanting to be a part of this team. That's awesome. Yeah. That's really cool. Yeah. Was this all the... So I do have a couple of construction oh, sure. picks if you guys want yeah. to see Oh it. yeah, this is how it's coming. Definitely doesn't give it its full, <laughs> like, you know, yeah. these are my, my dark, terrible pictures. But one of the considerations for this space is because I have these roll-up doors that come down to like a pony wall, yeah. I'm building a bar that extends out into the courtyard that you see there. That purple um, board will yeah. actually get steel panels on it and there'll be a bar that comes out. So it serves this dual indoor outdoor purpose where you can sit at the bar outside, have a happy hour cocktail. Maybe that's where I'll take my meetings. <laughs> hey, so I, I'm sure your clients will enjoy this yes. space. So we're, we're utilizing the outdoor space as well as much as possible. Really um, cool. That back wall that you see there is the 16 foot high wall that Marcy's going to paint her mural. mural oh, on, wow. On yeah, it's a very big wall. Okay, yes. cool. And that's a six foot wide opening that leads back to our sample showroom where you get to sit test the chairs and you know nice. pick the tires on the product oh that's cool this on the right is my office which has now been drywalled but you can see i've got glass all the way floor to ceiling and i'm sitting right on congress that's cool that's keeping so an cool. eye on everything you guys we talk about there's so many creatives that are listening right now like in your world this is your portfolio like so this is your amazing yes. showroom yes. portfolio where people get to come in and experience yeah. and like yeah. how exciting and this is going to be ready in the fall yeah. so yeah pretty soon pretty soon very soon yeah it's exciting to have gotten to a place where i don't have to just use my words to tell people what i can do <laughs> yeah just show them yeah just like come in here and so. check it out awesome yes. thanks for sharing course, thanks. your projects i know that everyone enjoyed probably seeing you know visually what you're working on and and now you guys when you walk down congress you're like oh yeah come say hi to jessica yeah. and you'll see her work around town too um I think I even got to know you through LinkedIn, oh, okay, yeah. um, seeing your work on there. So that's one thing I always appreciate of you sharing your visuals yeah. on social yeah. is like, I think very inspiring. Awesome, thanks. So um, thanks for sharing that and wanted to talk about, we didn't actually talk about when you decided to start your own business mm -hmm. and how did you make that leap? Yeah. Yeah. So I didn't know this industry existed. You know, I moved into to Tucson in my early twenties, got into retail and real estate, and it just wasn't even on my radar. Um, but I, I was a Girl Scout leader. 
for my daughter's troop for several years. And one of my moms owned a firm, a commercial furnishings firm. And we didn't get along very well. She was not a nice person. <laughs> That's just factual, but she was a very powerful, dynamic person. And she saw value in the skills I was presenting as a Girl Scout leader. So she kind of hired me on the spot to come be her project manager. Cool. At that time, real estate was crashing. So I needed a job. So it was like, fine. When was this again? Or this was 2007. Okay. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yep. So I needed something new anyways. Yeah. But I was just immediately enamored. I loved that I got to tap into these creative uh, skills that I had. I got to be an instant designer in some ways. I mean, I was just picking fabrics for chairs, but it was amazing to me. It blew my mind, but I also got to tap into the entrepreneurial side of me that has always existed. Mm -hmm. You know, I was doing bake sales as like a six-year-old, you know, nice. like <laughs> I relate to that. I was like lemonade. Yeah. I held a fashion show in like the seventh grade. Oh, you know? like, cool. Yeah. I was just very, yeah, very entrepreneurial. Um, so it, I just loved that. I felt like I had found an industry that could utilize all of my skill sets, and I never got bored. I've been doing this for 13 years and I'm still learning something new all the time. And that to me is super inspiring. So, yes. Yeah, so, um, wait, what was the question? <laughs> <laughs> That's perfect. Well, yeah. you, well, and you made me think you're one thing that I know about you is actually, you know, we're talking about matriarchy yeah. and, um, you've always worked for small women owned businesses, I have, which I yes. think is really interesting. It is. Yeah. I never, I've furnished corporate, so many corporate spaces around the country and the world really, but I've only ever worked for small businesses, women ran, That's you know, awesome. and I learned a lot. And in some ways I learned a lot about how to not do things. And I feel like those were powerful lessons too. Okay. Right. Yeah. Um, and I got to this point in my career, having worked in this other smaller firm where I had this amazing opportunity because it was such a small company to learn every role. Mm -hmm. I learned project management. I learned design. I learned sales, uh, mostly because I self-promoted myself into those roles. But that's a that's the power of working for a small company. Yeah. You have to be both willing mm -hmm. to wear the hats. Yeah. But that's an opportunity. Yes. You can learn a lot, a lot more a lot. than just yes. maybe if you were in a big firm yes. in this very narrow yes. role. Yeah. And I don't know if a lot of people know this about me, but I, I did not get a degree in design. I learned this by doing cool. Yeah. 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 And sometimes those are the best lessons, right? Yeah. yeah. And you, and actually that sounds, it just sounds very entrepreneurial too. Mm -hmm. like, um, being yes. able to fail or being yes. able to pivot or yes. learning from your lessons yes. and stuff. And yes. I think that ties into the spirit we have here in Tucson. Yes. And what I love is, um, when, and to get back to even the theme matriarchy, like when you hear the term matriarchy, what does that mean to you? Yeah, it's interesting. I think I've only referred to myself as a matriarch once in my life, and it had a lot to do with the demand my children put on me. <laughs> <laughs> but I think when we're talking about matriarchy, we're talking about women in leadership roles, in their various, you know, societal roles, in their businesses and at home. And I think really what that is, is how women approach leadership. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it is kind of hard to talk about matriarchy and not talk about the patriarchy because, you know, we do live in a patriarchal society. And so it's that contrast that I think that's interesting mm -hmm. and that needs to be part of the conversation. Yes. Right. Yeah. Right. What, what do you think of um, when you think of um, kind of a matriarchy, what sort of yeah. traits yeah. Um, do you feel like come to mind with, with women in leadership? Yeah. You know, I've had to think about that in yeah. preparation for this, because I feel like, well, I am a woman and I do own a business and I do employ people. And what about my approach to that has been because I'm a woman and what about of it is just me. But I, having like thought that through, I think that as women, we approach our relationships with our employees. Let's talk about this from a professional level, like okay. a corporation. Yeah. We approach our relationship, at least I do, if I want to speak to myself, um, with a level of empathy, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. for our staff. Mm -hmm. And the way that I try to coach and lead is a very collaborative. Mm -hmm. In fact, the way I hire is I want someone that can run with this role, bring value, hopefully have more skills than I do in a particular area yeah. and encourage those without micromanaging that. Mm -hmm. And to me, that is empowering yes. this person. And yes. that I feel like it's a win-win and it's coming from a place of this, I hate to use the word maternal, but it kind of is. You know, when you bring people into your team, you are now responsible for their training and their, you know, work-life balance. And so I really have tried to promote that in my own company, allowing people to have both the successful career 
without sacrificing, yeah. you know, their, their actual lives. So, yeah. yeah. What do you think the world would be like, or even just our community, if there were even more women leaders, like what if we were the majority, what would that be like? Yes. You know, and I hate to speak to like, okay, all women and all men. So please caveat, like, yes, you know, generally yes. speaking, yeah. women approach things in this very collaborative way. We want everyone to feel empowered. We want everyone to have a role and act in it and take ownership of it. And then we are grateful for that. And I think we give positive feedback in a good way, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. in a lot of ways. And I do think that that is an important part of the matriarchal role in leadership is to you know, continue to give that good feedback as well. Um, you're making me, so I'm thinking about uh, what would it be like if there was more women in matriarchal roles? And mm -hmm. another thing too is how can we- So many things would get done. <laughs> yeah, hey, so many things would get done. So we got a clap from over there, sweet. And also um, what can we do too as uh, women in leadership to help support other women? Yeah, that's a good question. And I think that um, for me personally, a lot of it is how I'm approaching this next phase of my business. You know, mm -hmm. I'm actively trying to attract and seek out talented women um, and give them a space that they feel like they can thrive in. There's one over here. Too, there right is. Now. Jess oh, is over here. My yeah. director of operations. She's amazing. You're going to see this girl rise like a star. Yay. You are. That's awesome. Um, let's see. Let's see. It's okay. So we got a little bit more time here. I wanted to talk about uh, also, let's see here. Mm, we've covered a lot of things. Yeah. Um, you brought up, you're a mom, yes. mom of three. How did you find balance yeah. as a young business owner, yeah. you know, being a mom of these three? I think awesome I blocked kids. out most of that first. <laughs> <laughs> the beginning. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So my story is maybe not typical. And I think it is one of the things that sort of enabled me to walk the path that I did. So I was married at 19 and I was had my second baby by the time I was 21 Wow, yeah. and had a mortgage by the time I was 24. And my third baby was born when I was 27. So I spent my twenties just having babies. <laughs> and, you know, while we've tried to encourage women to get their careers established and then go off and have their families, I did it the other way around. And it actually kind of enabled me. I didn't care if I was poor when I was young and I had a way a lot more energy than I would have for that now. So it worked yeah. out. Um, but I also, I hate to say this, but it's honest for me. And I'm going to say it yeah. is that I got a divorce when I was 29. My kids were a little older at that point. Um, but we then had a schedule. Mm. So I was only a mom half the time. Mm -hmm. And that's right about the time I started my business. And so as a reality for me, I got to clock out and work on my business. Mm. And I know that not everybody has that opportunity, but right. I think it probably was in some ways instrumental. Um, and that's just my path, you know? Yeah. So, and of course I'm completely dedicated to my kids. They're more work now that they've graduated and moved out. And some are teenagers. House. And I actually, I'm a grandmother. One of those. Oh yeah. Yes. Yes. Grayson. My little baby Grayson, uh, Grayson. Little 20 month old Grayson. Yeah. So I think a lot of it is just women do what they have to do. You know what I mean? We just, yeah. we don't question the fact that we have to get up two hours earlier than our male counterparts to put, pull it all together, but we do. Mm -hmm. And we just do it. Yeah. You know, yeah. and when there's passion behind it, you just are happy to do it, honestly. I love that. What What would you like your kids as they grow up and some out of the teenage years when they actually think of others besides themselves? And I don't, don't, don't just mean your teenager, yeah. I mean teenagers yeah. in general. Yeah. But what would you like them to think about your life and career as they get older? What would you like them to hopefully realize? I want them to realize that anything is possible. You know, if you can dream it, you could do it. I mean, it sounds a little cheesy, but it's honest and it's true. I mean... I had a lot of people provide good influence in my life, but I picked my path and I blazed my path and I keep blazing that path. And I don't think you have to hold yourself back because you think you're not qualified. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like you build your qualifications. Yeah. You I like know? That. And I want kids to understand that, mm -hmm. that they can really do. And they have so many opportunities this generation because of the internet, because mm -hmm. of all these new, you know, avenues, there's a lot out there and I don't want them to hold themselves back, but they have to do like do the work. You have to do the work. Yes. It doesn't come easy. No, I struggled for a decade of hard, hard, hard 
work mm -hmm. to get to a place where I had an opportunity to do it for myself. So I, yeah, I definitely want to say put in the work. I like to put in the work. I also, I like a point, I, and I've read this before actually, that um, when there's jobs and we're in this time of some places are really hiring a lot and you're, you're hiring and those kind of things. And I heard sometimes that um, if men and women are looking at the same job post, yeah. that sometimes as a female, for whatever reason, if you don't nail yes. these bullet points, yes. you sometimes just don't even apply. Yeah, no, there's a trend that I've seen in my own interviewing and hiring, absolutely, where a man will apply for a job if he has maybe 25% qualification match, but come in and claim to be 100% ready to just kill it. Whereas the woman will have to hit almost every 90 to 100% before she'll even apply. And, you know, I don't know, there's, there's a lot of thoughts I have around that. I, I feel like women need to have a little bit more, um, I don't know, they need to believe in themselves a little bit more for sure. Um, and just know that they are capable of everything. But I think we need to start being a little more critical of the men that we hire an interview and not just assume that because mm. even if there's a paper trail <laughs> that says they can do the job it just opens up a more even playing field yeah you know yeah. if if we're a little more self-aware yeah and i think women do have a, a pretty strong level of self-awareness i agree with that and there's a lot of value to that in the workplace yeah yeah i think that's a really good point yeah um well, looking at the time, I think I'm going to open it up now to questions, and I'm sure there's been some chats um, cool. on there. Thank you for, yeah. let's thank Jessica for that. Yay! Yeah. Yeah. So. One question. The text got switched from iPhone to Android. Why did you switch from iPhone to Oh, to some degree they did. Um, they brought back, let's see, when we first furnished that space, there was about 185 people in it and i believe they've brought back about half of those folks to date they're not requiring that people be in the office full time so i believe that's the model although i do think people are going to have dedicated desks i don't know that they're sharing the desks i haven't been totally a part of that conversation as they've had to figure it out as they go um, but there is a hybrid-ish model in place yes that's cool yeah i think we're gonna see that a lot yes see yeah that a whole lot Besides, what were some of the other challenges that you faced this past year in this line of work? Because yeah. people weren't really going into their office for a while. So <laughs> no, no. Um, well, for comparison's sake, in 2019, we were Tucson's fastest growing business. And in 2020, we were not. <laughs> 2020, what that was that even a year? I don't, I don't know. even know. Yeah. I don't even know. But honestly, it's still trailing into this year because you're right that people were not buying office furniture. They were laying low to see what was going to be required of the office. And I think that our industry has completely had to pivot on what the office space functions like now. It's completely different. The expectations are different. And so there's going to be a wave as we move through this next couple of years of reconfiguring the space to meet the needs. Um, so yeah, challenging for sure. We had to try and keep the business together, apply for PPP loans, figure out what the new value was that we could add to our, for our clients. Mm -hmm. There was a lot of work from home quotes. There was a lot of reconfiguration labor quotes. So it was really just a, a very quick pivot wow. to something totally new, which yeah. is good. It keeps us on our toes, keeps us fresh. Yeah. And, yeah. and you brought something up too. We're literally in a work space right now mm -hmm. common workspace mm -hmm. you used to be at connect yeah. that's how you met jen over yes. here building a network can you talk more about because there's going to be both there's going to be the offices you're furnishing but also we have these really cool um co-working spaces mm -hmm. in tucson can you talk about your experience um uh starting off in that kind of Place. I loved being in a co-working space. I'm a big believer in the value of it because it promotes community. Yeah, yeah. You know, you've got your Regis's of the world where you're just renting a little desk and it does save some money, but a co-working space actually encourages collaboration. And at Connect, I got my logo designed and developed. I got legal assistance there. Um, I picked up tons of leads because it drew so many people from the community mm -hmm. to come in and talk. Mm -hmm. And you get this moral support. You yeah. know, everyone was so proud of us and you yeah. just get to hear that positive feedback so much. So I love being in co-working space. I'm a big, big fan. And, and you brought up building relationships yes. and like, and another big thing to talk about is collaboration. Yes. So um, we talked about um, with women in leadership, there's a lot of collaboration. Even when you're talking about your projects, you've yeah. talked a lot about collaboration yeah. and, um, and then 
then coupled with basically the relationship. So yes. through through Corgan Space, you got those relationships, but that's what you value so much in your own business yeah. too. Is it probably one of your main energies put into those relationships? Yeah. I mean, I'll take a cut on my profit before I will compromise a client's expectations and damage that relationship. It is a leading key factor in how we do things. And then it tends to feed us back. You know, I can yeah. call up any one of these clients and say, Hey, can I bring someone through to tour your space after hours? Sure. Here's the key. Cool. Hey, can we borrow that special chair we sold you so we can demo it to another client? Absolutely. Here it is. So it's, it feeds us back. That's cool. You know? Yeah. yeah. It does. That's awesome. Is there another question? Yes, yeah, so Stephanie pointed out that it's very true for her as well that she only applies if she pretty much meets everything in the job description. So, what would you recommend? Somewhere between that 25 and 90%. Oh, that's yeah. a good question. I think it just really depends on how far you're stretching yourself out of that comfort zone. If there's a technical skill that there's just no way you're going to accomplish, then fine. But if it's a matter of, well, have I gotten experience in that particular task, but I know I'm capable of it, go for it. I think that's good advice. And I think we were actually talking about this earlier, hiring earlier, but mm -hmm. sometimes those cover letters, which sometimes yes. people forget to do. Do a cover letter always. So do a cover cover letter always. And that's your place yes. to explain, yes. right? Yes. <laughs> that's your yes. place to explain if you don't necessarily have that specific thing, yeah. but what have you done or yes. learned that can relate somehow to that and yes. showing that you take initiative yes. and are curious and are excited or passionate about whatever that position may yeah, be. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. That's a great question. And Jen would like you to talk a little bit more about how you use color or even textures in a space to create a certain vibe or energy. Oh, I love that. Color. I love that. Well, so specifically in our last showroom, we didn't have any natural light. We didn't have any windows. Oh, yeah. Yeah, because so it's a basement. I didn't call it, it was the lower level, but it was a basement. And so I brought in tons of vibrant color to kind of emulate the outdoors, even though we didn't have the view of the outdoors. And that was great. I mean, it creates this liveliness in the space that wasn't there before. Um, I just furnished and um, designed a new banking space. Okay. And I actually took the palette very soft because the only reason you as a client go to the corporate headquarters of a bank is when you're mad. <laughs> oh, when you're mad? <laughs> yeah. Oh, you don't want so red in there. We went soft palette. Okay. We kept it very serene and peaceful. So these are the, this is where my brain goes. Nice. <laughs> I love that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Color has a big impact. It does. And again, we're kind of driven by clients' brands in a lot of ways, yes. Yes. but they also trust us a lot to tell them when they're wrong. Mm. So if I see a reason to take a palette in another direction either because everyone has done turquoise for the last three years or whatever then people are really receptive so it's just kind of like what your function of your space is what your end goal is what your company culture is but i love to try and be unique with every project i work on at least in some way yeah yeah yeah, yeah. i could see how um you know many of us probably are designers also that are here and you develop these brand mm -hmm. guidelines and mm -hmm. stuff but you probably aren't necessarily always thinking when you're doing that like the, how the furniture yes. really relates yeah. and like if you if your thing's mustard yellow but yeah. do you want like a mustard everything yellow needs everything to be yes. yes yes i will say just to that point about the furniture yeah one of my the things that used to keep me up at night when i was new in my industry is what if someone is sitting in that desk yeah. and they're cursing me for five years because the cords aren't well managed or mm. it's not comfortable and so that was a really strong driving component for me early on in learning design and learning furniture is would i want to sit at this desk and would i be happy about it and is someone going to be cursing my name or are they going to be praising it yes and so i really put a lot of attention into the details and i think that's why our referral business is so good and you're speaking about empathy which yes, we brought up I a lot, a lot during this thing and, and putting yourself in that user yeah. experience yes, and like, point. do I want to stay here for eight hours a day? Point. Yeah, absolutely. yeah, that was a good question. Yeah. And so Martha said that she's discovered work from home is her, her favorite. Yeah. So she's curious, do you do any, I guess, consulting mm -hmm. and then like selling and delivering coffee and furniture mm -hmm. to uh, oh, that's <laughs> that's no, I definitely found a lot of value in working from home too. talk about that work life balance. You know, my plants are so healthy now. And like, <laughs> They're well watered. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And so I'm a big fan as well. We did do a program um, early on where we were um, helping sort of like the Geico's of the world develop a work from home package. 
Um, I'm more than happy to do a Zoom with an ergonomic assessment, make sure you're sitting correctly, see if there's any like easy adjustments that you can make. That would be um, something I would just happily help with. We try to focus our billable services on quantity, Yeah, but I'm yeah. more than happy to help with that type of That's thing. That's cool. Yeah. And actually that, um, what is your website so people can yeah. check you out yeah. or contact you through there? Yeah, you can go to jkaiser.com, look at our team and our projects and our products and our services. It's all there. Yep. And then you're, and she's also on social, which I was bringing up. So like LinkedIn, great place to mm -hmm. network, but also just to see what visuals and new projects yeah. you're working on. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. We've got a fun one going on in Costa Rica now. So for real, wait, what's this about? Yeah. It's actually our third phase. Do you need someone to go Costa with Rica. you? Do you need to like, I mean, okay. yes, they do have a big COVID wait ha happening right now. Okay. So maybe, maybe not a little maybe. extra. <laughs> I don't know, but yeah, yeah, no, but we are, uh, we're opening up another call center there. That was a fun project. I got to learn all about importing furniture. Oh, yeah, wow. it was US made. Oh. But we exported slash imported into uh, San Jose. Always learning. Always learning. Uh, yeah. Wow, that's yeah. exciting. Mm -hmm. Cool. Yeah. Oh, which? Okay. So the next question. Okay. Um, I'll read. Uh, Jenny's question. Big picture. Yeah. What benefits do you think arise if female leadership could have on Tucson as a whole? What, what benefits could arrive, arise from having women in leadership in Tucson as a whole for Tucson. Yeah. I mean, going back to that piece of getting things done, Tucson is young in some ways, right? And there's a lot of growth and uh, development that we still need to do. And that requires doers and action-oriented people. And women are so about that, especially when you talk about this empathetic, like let's yeah. think about the community as mm -hmm. a whole. Man, can you imagine the impact if we had more women at the helm of that conversation mm -hmm. and that execution? Because it's really about the execution. It all comes down to execution. We can talk all day long, yeah. but what are we actually doing? Yeah. And women are the doers. Yes. I like that. All right, Lauren, I ask, could you please speak more as to how you navigated the collaborative relationship with the architect? I question your everything. Oh, okay. So, <laughs> so she was. So, asked by the way, that was a woman. So she was asked how she collaborated with the architect, but there was some challenges there and how did Jessica yeah. navigate that? Yeah, so um, I don't know why she had such a hard time with me. I have suspicions, but to get to your question without a lot of backstory, um, I had to be an exceptional professional. I had to give her no room. I had to make no mistakes. I had to validate every single move I did and I had to do that for a year. Ooh, that's okay. It was tough. That's that sounds like just kind of extra yeah. pressure on an already yes. stressful. Yes. Situation. But I did it. Yeah. And I knew that that's what the job required, and that's yeah. That's what every project that has a new role of the, that it requires of you, and that's what this one needed. Yeah. Um. So I just, I mean, unfortunately, the answer is I had to work harder and be better. But I did learn a lot. I did from that experience. So thanks, Rachel. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so you mentioned having to sometimes tell a client what they want is not the best. Can you give any tips for how to help guide that type of conversation? Be very confident in it. That's really, if you're confident and you can back it up with why you believe that, even if they don't say yes and they don't agree with you, you know you did your part. You, you did what you could to try and preserve the integrity of that design. It usually works, but it's about backing it up with reasons and being confident in it, and then you're good to go. Very good. Yeah. All right. Great question. I know these are really good questions. We're good. Um, so I guess number one, thank you, Jessica Kaiser, for being here today. Hey, it's been awesome yeah. and it's been fun. I love being in person. This I love is exciting. This She's amazing. Yay. Yeah. We get to be here. And then soon we're trying to get back in person for creative mornings. We can't wait to see everyone and drink our coffee and our yes. pastries yes. and network and, yes. and still do these amazing talks so exciting um by the way we're yeah. gonna have a very big party this fall with the grand opening of the showroom and i expect it to be a joint party between hexagon and jay kaiser potentially rio nuevo so it's going to be a great time looking at september for that probably that's so exciting i can't yeah. i can't wait to see your yes. new space see the, real, all the will, reality i will be welcome that's awesome yes. um thank you and i think um josh do i like do this again okay once again, this um, theme was matriarchy. This was a really awesome discussion. And we want to especially thank our team here, Jen Mead, Emily Pratt, Nissa, and Josh, who's secretly right here. You might've heard him say some questions. Um, 
Thank you everyone for making this a really fun first ever live stream. So cool. Yeah, wow. the future is now. <laughs> so everyone have a great day. And then, oh, and we always, I forgot, almost forgot. We have a great quote for today. Mm -hmm. So it's whatever women do, they must do twice as well as men to be thought half as good. Luckily, this is not difficult. And that's by Charlotte Witten Mayer. Yes. yes, love it. So everyone enjoy, enjoy your, it's a weekend almost, have fun. And we'll see you next month um, for Creative Mornings Tucson.